Now. All right. Hello. We, hello. We are live on uh, air. Today is October 18, 2014. Uh, welcome to our regular Saturday webinar. Um, we are community of humancolony.org. Join us at humancolony.org and search YouTube to find us for the keyword H-U-C-O-L-O, -O, which is abbreviated human colony, H-U-C-O-L-O, and you will find us. It's a unique identifier for us. Friend us on Facebook, find on us on Google+. Google Plus. Welcome, everybody. Uh, uh, today, I want to first, and most important for me, announce, uh, please, anybody who has confirmations, please... Uh, contact me, uh, talk to me through Skype, through Google+, and tell me like, what, what <coughs> information did you get. You should turn off our cell phones, huh? Yeah, that would be nice. Oh, yes, I uh, turn off our cell phones. All right. And uh, confirmations, especially mechanical ones, something tangible which you can touch, something you can see without going in a special state. That would be great. Because everything else uh, is like dreamlike, which is absolutely great. We have a collective dream, but I would like to hear something. Uh, you know, some people have something tangible, and lately I got something tangible. I don't know what it is, so that would be my question. Uh, when I carry something in my left hand, something spills on my hand, and I feel drops of like liquid nitrogen or drops of something very cold, and I don't know what it is. But it's only left hand, and um, I have to carry something there. If I don't have something, anything, it doesn't drop. So, so for me, it's kind of something supernatural, but I don't know what it is. It could be some kind of neurological problem. So that's uh, please uh, contact me. Uh, Jim, Jim gets uh, his confirmations, and I, I know, but but and, and I I heard something from others, but uh, I invite more. Let's let's share what what we experience together, and especially something which you can touch and which you really can um, get to that without channeling, without gain, get, getting into altered state. That would be just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And also invite aliens to help us with that, with sightings, something which you can see without get, getting into altered state, and uh, visits to our rooms, visits to our bodies, and things of that sort. You know, just writing on the wall. Like if, if aliens can, can write something on the wall for us, that would be something we can uh, appreciate. With that technology, it's easy, easy, right? It's uh, like hologram. Your landlord might not appreciate it. Uh, yes, yes, and and then um, and then you know we, we can take you know we can figure it out. Uh, we can afford a little bit of damage of the wall. I mean, actually, if you rent an apartment, uh, you can you can change anything. You can paint anything on the wall. You know, they only worry about because they paint anyway when you when you leave. So that's not a big deal. All right. Um, a second thing was about archons. Um, do we have Robbie here? Robbie is not here. No. Okay. Robbie asked. Yeah, uh, I'm here. Where is he? I don't see him. I got a new avatar. Oh, oh. it's not permitted. You have to stay with the old one. Uh, no. <laughs> Welcome, Robbie. Do you want to speak about archons? You wanted to say something. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to ask about that to a, a channel, if that's okay. Um, and get their perception on it. I mean, I've had some pretty amazing experiences in the last 48 hours, and so I want a little bit of clarification on that, if that's possible. <laughs> Wonderful. So archons are... Well, they're ancient Greeks. Ancient? They're ancient Greeks. Greeks, meaning humans? They were, they were, there were archons <laughs> on Earth in ancient Greek time, yes. Oh, so they're not humans. Okay. I just know what I saw. I mean, I know what I read, that's all. Oh, you read. Yeah, I had a bit of experience um, recently, Jim, and um, I remember being on the colonies and having an interaction, being in a room um, with some crystals in there, crystals were flashing, um, and then all of a sudden we were shown something, and we said we're only allowed to see this in holographic form. And the crystal then projected this gray, black and white type of gray figure, not very tall, about three or four foot tall, and it was very statue-like, very rounded, um, didn't have much of a form. And, um, and I woke up after that, and I just had in my head, Google Archon Spirit World. And it led me to an article, which I also had a past life remembrance of this article, of something in there, and they just synchronistically read it. And so 
I was just I wanted to find out a little bit more about that and and dig a bit deeper because there is some rather let's say malevolent aspects to this uh, uh, this group called the Archons and they're very ancient cyborg like right. and they were pretty much erased from our history but they seem to be popping up back again especially in the media and all these types of things they appeared in Greek history a while back they were rulers or um, the, the name Archon means rulers and it's it's there was nine rulers at one time over Arth Athenia and um, they they I guess they were pretty powerful so and Athenia back at that time was a huge place so um, in our history they did appear there were nine of them but it does mean ruler and it has another meaning is Lord it also means Lord mm -hmm. And so uh, they were probably extraterrestrials, I'm going to imagine, because of the way that they talk about these particular rulers or lords was very different. They they could they were very special. So um, we'll ask you can ask that question when when and if and who ever comes. So wonderful. Yeah. Um, so one of the things which is relates to our archons is that they uh, there is a lot of darkness associated with them. They're not necessarily bad or dark, but uh, in our <laughs> understanding, whatever I meet on internet, they seem to be dark. So we kind of dive in a research of dark, dark topic. And Jim, what do, what do you do with when you go into dark topic, research in dark topic? Um, they they let somebody positive talk about it <laughs> because fishing doesn't allow any uh, dark beings or beings that seem to be uh, dark into me. He warns me ahead of time if they're coming, and I can get rid of them. But um, <clears throat> like Shell did, he talked about shadows and all that different stuff about dark topics in a very positive way and how to get rid of them and things of that nature. So uh, if they do come, it'll probably be somebody positive that will talk about um, how to remove them or answer questions about them. That's what I would assume. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Careful, Max, you need oil on that microphone. <laughs> Pricing, Very what squeaky. Would, what, what you would recommend when you dive in dark, research of dark, what would you recommend to people? Hmm. Uh, I don't really entertain the negative. Um, I... I I, I really don't go in that direction. So yes, likewise. I even catch my thoughts going in that direction. I cancel it. I'll try to switch to the positive immediately. Uh huh. So uh, we can, we can yeah, I would I would like to get some sort of um, angelic. Dark topic. What would you do? Just don't go there. Yeah, I try to stay away from dark topics. Um. I um. <laughs> You know, this this is my first session, so I don't know. But you know, you deal with dark topics daily. Yeah, right? I try to, I try to, you know, negate well, it. I mean, yeah, when you hear about the war, what do you do? The what? The war. Oh, I hate it. I mean, I get just upset. hate it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have, I have, uh, I have uh, opinions because um, I'm being Jewish. I'm, you know, I didn't like what was going Muzzle on in job. Israel, and uh, you know. I don't really pay attention. I do, but don't. <laughs> What's going on now? I don't even know because I right. want to stay away from negativity right now. It doesn't seem like there's uh, anything terrible happening in Israel, or at right. least what we hear. All right. Okay. Um, Actually, Maxine, I, yeah. I want to correct that. Yes. Um, I think that like attracts like, of course. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm thinking about it, when I hear of, and, and it's just because she brought up what's happening on in the world, I send love. Uh -huh. Excellent. I, I send love, and that, of course, will conquer the darkness uh -huh. that's out there. Like, like he, uh, you know, we, we have been trained by, by Barbara Carlton to be Reiki healers. When we drive and see car accident, absolutely natural, you put on hand and send healing there. And anybody can do that. You know, if you see a trouble, you know, one of the first moments, send healing like that. Just mm -hmm. imagine yourself sending healing there. Uh, ask for help of, 
you know, obviously there is already angelic help, but ask more angels to help and uh, make it so it would be most beneficial for everybody. I mean, there is tons of ways to deal with it, but as a researcher, I have to like work with blood and killing unfortunate uh, model organisms. So I also send send my pardons and uh, blessings to them when I have to do that. But uh, you know, and here we go into the dark topic. Possibly, uh, don't forget to come back. That's what I would say. I mean, you are what you are, where your attention is. If you f focus your attention on dark and stay there for a long time, you will reflect it and you will merge with it. Uh, make sure you are at your most comfortable place. So you dive and come back. Dive and come back. And ideally, you dive and come even higher position than you were before, like in trampoline of dive up. So there is certain dynamics in that. There is sort of art of diving and getting back into a better position. And depression is one of those. Depression is a state where you collapse into a point and then you expand again, something like that. Bashar spoke about that. So, And that involves movement. And I just wanted to mention time is everything. You know, people say, not people say, higher beings say there is no time. And that means time is an illusion. But from 3D perspective, you also can say that manipulate time. You can manipulate time, again, by shifting your focus of attention and intention. So when you dive and you come back, you use time. You use that movement in time. You can manipulate time to come back at a better position, like in a spiral. You go higher and higher in a spiral, up and down, up and down. And the last thing, which is also related to, th to that, is unconditional love. Uh, unconditional love. Say something about that. Um, it's unconditional. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, it's it's very hard to imagine. Basically, the worst thing you can send unconditional love to it, but you know, it is a state of mind. It is a state of mind. It is a balance. Unconditional love is balance. And how can you express unconditional love to something really bad? Like, mosquito is biting you. How do you unconditional love mosquito which bites you? Would you like to know how the Dalai Dai Lama deals with this situation? Uh, let me think. Let me just meditate for a second. Dalai Lama. Oh, he is so cunning. I love him. Uh, he would give a wonderful answer. How does he deal? He lets the first mosquito bite him. Uh -huh. and take the blood. Uh -huh. But then he's like, that's it, no more. And then the rest gets spotted, let's say. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, yes. Very similar to my, my understanding. Yes, and it is, again, a function of time. First one in time, you're, you're permitted. But second, there is a draw line on the sand, right? Yeah, like, how would you deal with Stalin? Like, you know, you know the Stalin, when he died, the day he died, was a big tragedy for some, but after that, there was a big awakening of the whole country. Very good things happen next years. Like say, say next next months already people just celebrated and came out on the streets and just realized, oh, a lot of this permitted. So how do we deal with unconditional love to Stalin or Hitler? Yeah, uh, so basically, I mean, these are extremes, but you know, uh, it is, again, let them bite you, but, but after that, draw a line and you have to love yourself, and basically, they, well, I mean, there is a lot of answers to that. One of the answers is what is most beneficial for them, okay? Because there is a lot of good in Stalin. There was a lot of good. He was, in part, was a wonderful person. That's why he rose so far high, but he also played with very negative energies, right? So um, what is good for that person? I mean, especially in family relationships, you know, you're being harmed, you need to protect yourself, but also ask what is best for the other person, right? And that opens doors which you wouldn't imagine the doors. But, you know, that question came up because we deal with um, incompatibilities between people in our community. And it's not the first time it happened, but it's just because we grow, it happens more often. It's not the first, not the second. It's like <coughs> third or fourth conflict we got. And um, we need to develop some sort of community, how do you call it? guidelines, community rules, community patterns of loving 
so lovely, lovingly solving incompatibilities. Jim, what would you say on that? About what? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, you sort of said that pretty fast. <laughs> Uh, lovingly solving incompatibilities between members in the community. How do we solve these problems? People just are not very compatible. Some <laughs> people some people think okay. that other people are destructive to them. They have to protect themselves. How do you protect them? Again, it's all about protection self and what is dear to you. I think that we have to allow people to be who they are, first of all. And we have to allow people to say what they want to say. It's a free country. We're all different. We have all different resonations about all different things. When we do not resonate with someone, how do you handle that? You just you agree to disagree with them, or you can agree to not talk to them at all, or you can do whatever resonates with you, but we all are different. We are not the same but love is the same in some ways because it resonates with <coughs> everyone, but it still resonates differently. But through each of you, you have to learn how to love each other, even those that you don't care for, even those that see, don't have a great agenda because we are part of that community, and through your example, they can grow. They can find a way to move to move with you in a compatible way now if they do not have a great agenda and they are moving in a negative way you just cannot be part of their agenda they move they will move in their own way without your help without your guidance and without your uh, uh, your connection however they still have your love they still have your love and they still ha that is your connection is that you will still love them even though you do not like their actions, even though you do not like their personality, even though you do not like what they do, you still love them. Yeah, that's you know, the art, an art to do things while still paying attention to the interests of the other person and sort of do it gracefully. It's it's art. It's it's you know, it's a trial which is there is no perfect answer to that actually. That is yeah. no actually, word. actually there is a perfect answer to that I thought. Yes. All oh, right. The perfect answer, of course, is unconditional love. When you are in co-creation with what you call that of another human being, and they are acting in a upon, let's say, a manner that is not conducive to what you would understand as an unconditional love. Always remember, entities of ascension, that most certainly those are gods. They have always been gods. They always will be gods. They have chosen that idea of separation for in and of themselves. They are in their own battle. They are love. But what they are understanding in themselves is their best expression of love, although it might not be vibrationally matched to that of yours, because you are on your own journey in the circle of life, much like they are. So if you look upon them in separation, give them your rules, your guides, and your separation, you continue the illusion in and of itself. Or you can allow them to play in the garden of love that you provide with unconditional love so they can work it out in their own natural timing. Once again, if you condition them to your beliefs, then they will only throw up their wall of protection because they are fighting in that idea for their own identity. And in identification is self-sustaining realization of belonging to that of the mind of God, which they are forgetting, but they are trying to reach back to. So the idea is to allow them to become their own lotus flower and to bloom and blossom. Exactly. And through the mirror of reflection that you provide, that of love, because you are allowed, they remember, they recognize themselves. And in that mirror, they go, oh. Maybe I don't prefer to be this idea of separation. And there is another reality for them to choose, that of love. So what you are providing is the miracle, truly. You are allowing them to see themselves in interaction. But if you put up what they are in direct conflict, that of, let's say, a battle, of separation, protection, the dark, then you will only sustain that. There is no darkness. There has never been darkness. What there is, is you shining your light in the unknown. The unknown is the dark, and what lies within there is the separation that you shine your light on, and it, the dark, remembers itself in that light. So that is what your miracle you are providing. Most. 
Oh, yes. So the idea here, the perfect answer, if you will, is that of just being. You are not human doings. You are human beings. Be the natural state of love and allow those to, let's say, frolic in the flowers of your Garden of Eden that you have provided. They will not harm you because you are putting out love. They will not need your protection because you are putting out love. Like attracts like, as our wonderful guest has said. If you are putting out love, what do you get back? The highest version possible in the mirror. Even though it may not be conducive to your version of your expectations, which of course is limited. But it is the best version of that person that you are providing, and you are once again being the Christ conscience, that of the miracle. Do not look for expectations of outcomes or conclusions or anything of that matter. Just allow the fleeting moment of now to blossom into what is the unknown, the dark, and shine once again in your life. Does this make sense, Anthony? Oh, yes, perfect, wonderful. Well, thank you for that yeah. clarification, because I did. You said it way better than I did. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Most certainly. I, I shall return you to Rocky. <laughs> I would ex expand on that. Just uh, you know, an another way of h helping that is looking at fear of your fear and the fear of the other person. What is that you are afraid of, and what what fear is driving their aggression? Why are they doing the way they do? I mean, there is usually a fear behind that. Uh, and and when you look with love at that fear, it helps. Um, it like uh, Allen Ginsberg <clears throat> was saying, uh, re repeated that saying. Uh, uh, I mean, he was traveling to India, and uh, there was good gurus mm -hmm. and not so good gurus, and almost obviously fake gurus there, right? And he said, you can learn even from a bad guru. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even a bad guru has something to teach to you. Because they're also kind of conducting, conducting are uh, conducive to godly grace, even bad gurus. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, also, this do our alien friend. Uh, when I complained about something like that, he said, you can't even imagine, try to imagine uh, the power of pure light. If you shine, no matter what, everything will dissolve, which is second in what, what we just heard. If you shine, you, uh, you should worry about it. And that's what brings us to the model. So what is our community? We don't have walls. And Jim said we are free country, but, but actually it's like way beyond country. <laughs> right? Uh, it's, it's open walls community. It's like a big party, global party, right? We are partying and, you know, use the same tricks as you use for parties. You know, if you want to be invited, ask for invitation. If you want to join a party, ask someone who goes there to take you, take you along. Okay. Or the best, create your own party. Create, I mean... It, it's free. We are creating a party, or we have ongoing mm -hmm. weekly party here. That's what we have. Mm -hmm. And you know, create your own club, create your own party. Uh, you know, there is no limit for number of parties here. Uh, no limit. It's uh, Google. Thank you, Google. But you know, even beyond Google, there is a lot of ways to connect through internet. As video Skype is one of them. Uh, so there is a lot of ways to create your own parties. So if you're not that. Uh, if you feel that vibration of someone else is distracting your vibration, just create your own party and uh, hang, hang with people who like you and you'll find, you know, shine and you'll find a lot of people attracted to your light. Mm -hmm. yes, came out. Uh, yeah, sign came out, yes. And pick, pick yeah. every day pick something which is dearest to you and share it with the world in the nicest ways possible and that will attract people just announce like people announce topic like crystalline hangouts and people get attracted to that and with that we start invitations so um, I ended my mind who else wants to invite anybody James will, will be channeling and uh, how many personal questions do we have? Uh, um, we'll I have one. Tons of personal questions for Tucker, right? Um, I, I just wanted to say something before we go oh, yes, any further. Um, this has been a week of uh, from some very difficult personal nows, um, and I was 
as I approached them or as they came, I tried to let them go into something else. But it, it was a difficult week, but it made it, I learned so much from it. Let me tell you why. It brought my spirit up to know that I was part of a world that does have some problems. Let me under, let me explain that. We do we are perfect love or perfect understanding in our perfect selves, but yet we have to go through these things so that we can be grateful for what is. Do you understand what I'm saying? What is is so beautiful and what is is so great that some of these difficult things just shine a light on the things that are so wonderful in your life. Can you say that better, Roxy? <laughs> is she still here? She is. <clears throat> She's just switching computers. Okay. Um, okay, I have another announcement. Um, so I we started using this questions uh, Q&A application. So this 20 viewers who view us outside of this party and want to say a word or ask a question, find this on the left bottom corner of the viewing window. Uh, there is questions and answers uh, uh, box, Q&A box. Uh, and then you can ask questions right there. And I will check once in a while. And if anybody can access that, please access and uh, read these questions aloud. And uh, we will address them if we can. I think we can start. Well, she can talk. That's fine. I have a strong feeling that you're connected to Shell at the moment, are you? We haven't spoken with Shell on a public. I, you, I couldn't hear what you said. I've, I've got the feeling that you've been connecting to some degree to Shell while you were speaking. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. We haven't spoken to Shell. He was speaking by himself. Mm -hmm. I, I do connect to people and things when I'm, it doesn't appear that I'm connected to people or things. Um, but, yes. um, we'll bring somebody through. Uh, I use the rule, if something doesn't resonate with me, I blade it on Jim, and if something good comes, it Jim is channeling someone. Yeah. Oh, thanks, I, Max. <laughs> I, I, I have heard a lot of people requesting to hear a summit of all the colonies who exist on what we do, we do on every colony. Oh, uh, a yeah. summary? Yeah, update yeah. on the colonies. Because oh, the colonies okay. have changed since, yes. so and what oh, yeah. we do on them, so that would be nice. And I have to say, I know I was there this week. Oh. I know I was at the colonies this week because I remember some things for a change. So that was very cool. And um, I don't remember seeing anybody in particular, but I do know that I was there because of some things that I was listening to while I was there and some things that I did while I was there. So it was very good. But right now I'll do a meditation. See who comes.
Messias. I I am from the Galactic Assembly. Welcome. Thank you for coming. They do not want me to say my name, but I am here to answer some questions about what is happening in the Galactic Assembly. Wonderful. Many of you may be aware of us but some of you may not be. Uh, I see Roxanne has been there before. Do you have questions for me? What is Galactic Assembly? Exactly what that sounds like. We assemble together to talk about those things in the galaxy that are going on and to represent different places. What are your main members? That is for them to say. There are too many to just sit and mention. Do you have Earth represented there? Yes. Who is represented there? Earth? Let the Earthlings represent themselves. Let them speak their own voices. I do not want to call them by their names because their names are different in the galactic. Would it be officials or unofficial members? Or Earth people? Are they government or otherwise? It doesn't matter. Thank you. Uh, Gert Fitnier, is it actively participating in the assembly? Yes. Uh, Galactic Federation of Light, is it uh, the same thing as assembly is different? It is similar, yet I cannot explain how they interact, but they are close to the same thing, but with different intentions. Do you have your own troops? Troops. No. I see. Um, Ashtar Command, is it represented? Yes. Is Ashtar being uh, visiting in person? I did not understand. Does he, Ashtar as a person come to you to the assembly? No. Uh, how is the Arcturian Council different from your assembly? Is it something different? You asked too many political questions. Oh, I thought that you wanted a political question. I would like some political questions, but the, these I am not to, to define all other policies and all other t political areas. Ask us about ourselves. What, what do you do represent and what your purpose? I, I represent a colony of aliens that you call aliens. What, are you, what is your goal? Peace. Mm -hmm. There are many ways to peace and many ways to enlightenment and we move forward as we can. We are not perfect beings, but yet we believe in connection. We believe in those things of the heart. How much do you deal with Earth? Are you, do you have an Earth project? Yes. Mm -hmm. We are helping with ascension. Thank you. But we are very elementary. We are basic with our help. Do you understand? Yes. We give what needs to be given to the 
ambassadors and they move it forward. There are many that are helping Earth with different things and different understandings and physical things and metaphysical things. We have some say in what happens here on your planet. Do, do you get to do anything on the colonies that we go to? I am not involved with the colonies. How about Jesus? Uh, are you connected to uh, spiritual energies like Jesus and Buddha? We are always connected to those spiritual worlds that influence us, yes. Dear one, I have a question. I would like to ask about a species we have almost deleted our information on this planet, and they're called the Archons. The Archons. Would you understand this? name and concept and yes. would you be able to elaborate more on these? The stale contingency. They are of their own volition, rulers of their own section of their skies and they move throughout the universe nomadically but and they check on many things, and they've been to many places, and they've spread much wisdom and understanding, but yet they have their own space that they call their own. What else would you like to know? I want to know if they were a, a benevolent type of species. Um, some of the reports we've been reading here on Earth is that they have been, let's say, uh, infiltrating certain areas on Earth and twisting it to their design. They're neutral in some aspects. You may see it as negative, but they are not negative. They are neutral. And they are not enforcing some of the things that you may think are positive because they see that that is not... It may appear positive, but it is not. Do you understand? Thank you. They are just interacting. That is all that they are doing. They are not pushing an agenda of their own. It is not their time. Uh -huh. Not on your planet. They are pushing their agendas other places, but not here. Yeah. How can we come and meet you at your place? You cannot. Okay. Not at this time. More specific, when you say you are a colony of aliens, that's a very broad uh, that description. That is my species. I am the leader of, I am the ambassador to a colony of aliens that you call aliens or off-worlders or extraterrestrials. It is a planet and we call ourselves a colony as well. How do you look like? What difference does it make? I, I'm we are all bound fresh. by spirit. I Our looks fashioning. are not particularly useful to you. Are, are you not fascinated how we look like? And what I see do? your faces. I have seen your faces at council. Mm. So we seem to have many interesting political events happening on this planet. Um, yeah. In what ways are you interacting with us in that sense? We are speaking to your ambassadors. We are not personally interactive with your species except to send information to your ambassadors, interact with their understanding of your culture, and to bring as much peace as we can and tranquility to thoughts that as we can to help with the conversation of spirituality and ascension it uh -huh. may seem it may seem unloving but it is not it is factual love in the sense that 
we do care what happens all over the galaxy. And your planet is a concern. Your planet is a great concern because there are many on it that would have it destroyed before being even inhabited by other species. Uh, can, do we know your star? Where, where are you located? You can't get there from here. Oh, just but the it's name. beyond Alpha Centauri. Uh -huh. What race are you? Delphi. You call our section Alpha Centauri Delphi Section 472. And how many races does uh, Galactic Ensemble have? It depends on who arrives. Everyone is welcome. Bring your ambassador. But there are hundreds, usually 120 or 30. But it is different representation every time. Let me explain that. Not all can make it to the assembly every time we meet. It's a, and so it would appear that they take information and the holographs of our societies away to their worlds. Does that make sense? Yes. And there is a news, you call it news, we would call it something else, but that news is spread throughout the galaxy for people to read or understand or observe whatever there is that they do with it, experience it. Some can actually experience it. Does Earth um, have an ambassador? Earth has several ambassadors. I'm, I'm very interested in uh, inviting uh, fl uh, saucers, whatever, the ships to appear in our sky and visitors to appear in our rooms. And I would like to pass an invitation through you to uh, benevolent, friendly races to communicate with the members of our community through this way, through signs in the skies and visits to our uh, homes. Ships are already around your planet and have been seen every day. We know. We want personal experience of that. I understand. Sabrina asks if if uh, you interact with the Council of Nine. Yes. She is an ambassador. Are there any other ambassadors in this group here? Yes, but they are not named. Are they aware of their ambassadors? They are not, their faces are not shown here, but they do know they are ambassadors. They are part of your human colony, but they do not wish to come forth, so they do not speak. But they're as important as others. Yes, they're as important. How, All how, are important. How can humans connect with other extraterrestrial species in a playful, loving way? That's it not will happen. Politics. You can connect, but only in the ways allowed. Yes, but are there any games that we can play in a playful way that is allowed at the moment? Games. Or very playful way, interaction. There is playful interaction already. Do you have any tips on that? No. Okay. What about mere intention? Intentions are good. Will that be enough to connect? No. They must be selected for and for 
interaction. There are reasons for this. Some cannot interact because they do not have the proper channel openings. Can those openings be developed? Some can, yes. All can if they knew how, but they will not attempt it. You are all able to. It's uncomfortable. I must go. Thank you. Thank you, Dewan. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Oh, hello. Hey, welcome, Jim. Hey. Um, that last fellow had a lot of trouble getting <coughs> through me, and um, I, I don't know why. He is from a far apart, and his technology I don't know. didn't didn't uh, wasn't used before. I guess it's, it didn't feel very very good that time. So. So our about. our questions and answer questions from outside audience are working. People are writing different things. Yes. People are asking how to learn channeling. Okay. Um, who determines Earth matter? And that can be interpreted like who defines Earth physical matter or who deals with Earth matters otherwise, political. Okay. We could have another channeling class. We did have one a while back, and it was... It was, I think, somewhat successful. Um, we had a couple breakthroughs and a couple breakouts or whatever, and it wasn't. It it could be better, but uh, yeah. we did have a couple uh, positive things. Really, we we up. needed we needed more time. We we did not have enough time for everyone. Yes, I think that was part of it. Yes, uh, we needed more. Uh, Would this. anybody be willing to do another channeling uh, uh, class? I, think so. <laughs> I would discourage people from channeling. Why? A uh, lot of people who are not ready go go try to channel. I would say, you know. Let me ask you a question, Max. How do you yeah. know they're not ready? Uh-huh. Uh, just get you, Wait a minute, wait a minute, babe. You're discouraging people from expanding into themselves. We're all channelers. We're all higher yeah. selves. If you cut that off, then you're saying that you're not ready. I'm right. sorry, Max. You're not the rule book. <laughs> you're not. I love you to death, but stop. <laughs> but that's a choice. If you don't want to stop, I understand. But just look at the apparency of it. Everyone is a channel. Why? You're channeling right now. You don't think you're channeling, but you are. Your thought is not original in your memory. That's a regurgitation. Your higher self has given you this thought, and you're speaking it to the best of your ability. That's channeling. Let people channel. Let people expand. Let people play. I love you, Max, but you're not the fucking rule book. Put it down. <laughs> Carry uh, on. I speak from fear, of course. That's okay. I just want you to see how much love you need to be. You don't need to do that to us. We all are channelers. I want so many channelers on earth because then it becomes commonplace and then we're connecting with all of our higher selves. You know, you know, forgive me if I'm a Pleiadian today, but I'm channeling. You know, the fun stuff like that. All right. I don't have to take me seriously, but people get the jobs, come back to normal life. Why? 
gets you out of uh, out of normal life to misery. You lose okay. your jobs and you lose and your mind. Wonderful. So Stop. you don't sustain what is anymore. There is no normal job. There is no that. If that is fear for you to step out and let people be channelers, imagine if I didn't step out and I stayed at my job. Imagine if, if Abraham and, and Esther didn't and Bashar and said, I can't do that. The possibilities and the probabilities of what you can expand, it's not permanent. They may just f try it for a while, which will lead to another expansion, another self, another reality of their own love for themselves, only resonating love throughout the collective. There's a thousand bells going off, trumpets blowing in the heavens saying, we have another person that is speaking their truth. Rejoice in that. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's all stepping stones, baby. It's all love. Mm, booyah. It's also very successful people like Tim Jobs on Apple, he just got kicked out from Apple and he just created a positive thing about that and then he suddenly came back to Apple because yes. he was the sex and have a po positive vibration and inspired a lot of. Well, the, and the more connection to spirit we have, I, how, how can we go wrong? It's really great. We can be, <laughs> I mean, of course you can have you can connect to the other side, but but the other side is just there to check this side. So it's all the same in, in many ways. And um, another thing is in our hangouts, everybody is channeling. It pops up here and there, and I just channeled a being that I did not integrate yesterday. How about that? Right, cool. So it's happening for everyone. Okay. Oh yes. So it's it's whether we know we can or whether we believe we can't, it's going to happen anyway. We're just allowing it. Yes, and, and uh, with allowance, there's love and allowance. So I encourage people if you want to have another uh, channeling class, that's great. Just let me know. If I get enough people, we can just do a bunch of people all at once, like last time. And it was very successful in many ways. There was a couple of real big breakthroughs. And, um, you know, it's just about love and sharing and bringing, uh, supporting each other in, in the way that they, we can understand how to do the, the next step. So. And take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> Keep calm and channel on. Booyah. Oh, wow. That's a t shirt idea and a half. Oh, I already got that printed. <laughs> that one's coming too. <laughs> what was that? It's a t shirt. I've, I've, uh, I'm with this guy from, uh, well, you guys know him. It's. Um, JC? No, 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 no. Uh, Tomas yeah. Voltar from, uh, the designer from France. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yes. we're, we're designing t-shirts and we have, I don't know, like 150 different things right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, wow. It's, it's like, you know, you know, like it just, just ideas like, um, you know, rela uh, keep calm and channel on and I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm a Pleiadian today. So <laughs> I forgot that. I love that. Uh, don't it's make me leave your I like that. Yeah, we got booyah. We got uh, don't make me leave your ass on another timeline. <laughs> uh, just different things because we thought about this and it's like, you know, you have astrological stuff, t-shirts and, you know, it tells you what it is, but there's not I'm walking down the street and I see a shirt that says 1111 on it. Wake up, wake up, wake up. And someone goes, "Oh my gosh, that's been happening to me. What does that mean?" Boom, a new connection. It's new yeah, ways of exactly. letting people know that I'm out there. And, you know, you know, you put a channel on, you're just like, okay, my family tree. I'm Pleiadian, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. And maybe <laughs> symbols. So you have all of these different things. I mean, I, I can't remember them all. We just, I mean, I can't if I thought about it. But there's just so many things that we're coming up. So we're designing coffee mugs, uh, you know, deep things uh, to put on the wall, you know, inspirational things. And uh, uh, let's see, T-shirts, beanies, hats, different different ideas mm -hmm. to represent out there in the world that hey, I'm awake, you know, and let those people go. What does that mean? And it would be, it's very very cool. And yes, you're right, Rowie. It is a it is an awesome T-shirt. So we're we're getting that go going, and we're gonna we started the website. It's called Galactic Fashions. 
So it's all coming. That's lovely. Lovely. Yes. Let all your nows be happy. <laughs> yeah. right. Oh, I like that one too. Yeah. Uh, here is what, what we came up like so, some time ago. We are here. Second, we are not alone. Third, we have friends up there. Fourth, telepathic society. Five, I'm here to help. Six, ground team. Seven, supporting humans, human colonies in space. Eight, open contact now. Nine, I have signed up to visit the stars. Ten, Pleiadians are cool. Eleven, hybrid society. Twelve, we all hybrids. Thirteen, hybrids are us. Fourteen, <coughs> I'm serious. Fifteen, my grandpa has four fingers. Sixteen, my grandpa is not from Earth. Seventeen, grays are cool. Eighteen, love grays. Nineteen, I love your yell. Twenty, see you in the skies. Twenty-one, interviewed with Pleiadians. Twenty-second, my alien brother is so cool. Twenty-three, I'm from up there and you are too. Twenty-four, I came down here to help. Twenty-five, learn to meditate and awaken. Twenty-six, awaken now. Twenty-seven, humancolony.org is just the beginning. Twenty-eight, no miracle today's. I am booked. Twenty-nine. I don't read minds, though I can. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do the whole list, Max? Astral travel is fun. Thirty-one. Remote viewing daily. Thirty-two. Being visited and love it. Thirty-three. Take me now. I'm ready. Thirty-four. Come and take me anytime. I'm ready. 35. Please, please, please take me now. <laughs> 36. I am not from here, but that's all right. 37. The contact has begun. 38. The contact is well underway. 39. Colonies up there. 40. Up there is the answer. 41. Up there, I belong. 42. Grassroots United. 43. Need each other together. 44. Love my friend Lakesh and Takar. 45. Visiting the Earth is fun. 46. Welcome to Earth. We are ready. 47. Proud member of the ground team. 48. Helping the contact and loving it. Yay. Yes. I've never asked you to do this before, but if you could all send me some energy today, there's some, there's a something. Yeah, I know what it is. We changed the location, and the technology and energies are not well focused it's, here yet. It should be, it should be fine. But um, <coughs> there's something. I'm not sure what, but I am. Uh, Roxy, do you know what's going on, perhaps? I so think... Uh, you need. No, the one that you channeled earlier? Yes. I think you're just... I think what you're feeling... It feels like what you're feeling is this new vibration, truly remembered, but it's yes. unfamiliar, so it kind of gives you that airy feeling, maybe anticipation or not, yes. not such a foothold. So I think that's what it is. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Because he I was feel like I, all of a sudden uh, the uh, everything sort of drained out for a yeah. second. Yeah, I don't think it's so much like I a never had that energy, although that's understandable. But it's just it's an unfamiliar, and it's which is awesome because I love unfamiliarity. Yeah, <laughs> I know I'm in the unknown, which is awesome. But it's just a little, you know, when I get that, it's like, holy cow, who are you? And that whole thing, yeah. and you're like, oh, okay, so you have to sit with that a little bit. But no, that that's all I felt with him, you know? Okay, because that's something that was unusual for me, really. Because uh, when he left, I sort of drained out with him. It was like... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> um, Rose wanted to say something. 
Yeah, this happened to um, Kim yesterday when she was um, channeling a, a ninth dimensional being, and she felt the same way as well, Jim. Interesting. I've never felt that before, really. He was different. You're on, on camera and with Michael. Just don't pull it. Oh, I have to go soon, but <coughs> my question was, do our animals come along with us? Pets. Oh. Our pets. I, I know the answer, but we can... Uh, do, do you want to answer it? To answer now. Oh, ask oh. them. All right, we'll ask them. Oh, we'll ask them. Yes. <laughs> I, my personal thought, I'm is that the animals are spirit as well and and plants go with us and and all the energies in the universe return to energy I mean plants are energy animals are energy humans are energy this microphones energy uh, it it all returns to a to a special place so I believe our animals we can be very connected to our animals and yes I believe that we can be um, come into spirit with them and come back to uh, other lives with them. So what do you think, Roxy? Where is she at? I'm right here, baby. Yeah. From what I understand is, <clears throat> again, for me, everything is new, everything is now. And when yeah. I had an understanding of what animals are, animals to me, what I got, are their fractal selves of a particular idea of expression. They're a soul. They're a, a, oh, sure. a being. They're choosing. So your pet, your dog, your cat, your, you know, one that's close to you might most certainly be part of your soul, your oversoul in that fashion. And of course it'll come with you and it'll represent that part of you that of experience that you understand. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just wanted to mention, um, you know, what, what we, when we speak to to um, people who are on the other side, basically what they say, and Bashar also mentioned that that when they are not incarnated, they are fully there, and you can uh, experience more of them. When they come back, jump, dive. When they dive back down here, there is much less of them. They kind of their attention is down here. They are not as accessible. The energy is there, but but not as fully as if they are not incarnated. So if you if you go there and your animal is still here, maybe there is less connection. But when they die, there is uh, they are fully fully available there. But but also I wanted to say that animals are much more open to spirits and like especially cats. So they probably would would enjoy your visits even while they are down here. But but that's kind of again it's very very fuzzy uh, understanding. It can be more There's a movie by Daryl yes. Anker, Fire Films, which describes uh, it's called Dearly Departed. If you want to get a bit of an idea on how all that works, um, it, that's a really good film to uh, watch. It's a kind of a docudrama. Well, let's share but, it on uh, the side. We I want to. Also, I reiki about five dogs a week. Every week I, I come into contact with these same five dogs, and they all run to me and want their reiki right away. So um, I feel a real connection with them. I love them very much, and they love me too. So we just we just spend our nows together at that at that, and they get their reiki and feel wonderful and move on. So yeah. Well, my one older cat that's usually quiet. <laughs> my one cat that is the quiet I have two cats was out of uh, her you know her norm acting very strange and I don't know if she thought I was knew I was coming here today or huh. whatever that she, maybe yeah maybe because usually she's very like laid back and the kitten is the, I have a cat and a kitten and you know they sort of like no. It's possible. Maybe you came today, and because of that, the aliens checked you yesterday, and when they saw the aliens just checking who is coming to our <laughs> event, Maybe party. Maybe we have company. Yes. yes. Um, they got excited. I, I think. I, I, I have to leave. I don't mean to right, Thank you. Thank you. And um, thank you for being with us. Thank you with, for being with us, Rosa. Thank you. And Rosa, before you go, yeah. Um, one idea is also that. Um, it's more that we are tapping into their higher frequencies, both the plants and the animals. 
So it's not like we are taking them with us. We are going, we are shifting to another parallel Earth with their higher frequencies. I believe you probably had a, a visitation last night to prepare you for today. So. Also, uh, the, the, the cats especially and the, the pets are reflection of us and especially the reflection maybe of something very hidden, a reflection of a hidden part of ourselves. So whatever happens with a cat it can be interpreted as a sign of what is happening under in unconscious. Oh, okay. Her, she said her other cat's buried in the yard. A human colony. Good question. What is our website? Humancolony.org. Human colony. Yeah, human colony. It's easy to remember. And actually, you just Google Hucola, H U abbreviated human colony. H U C O L O. You get. I'll keep in touch. Oh, very good. Come, come over. Nice meeting you. Nice, nice meeting you too. Thank Have you. a great day. Thanks. I have another commitment. Okay. How, how long do you usually go? A couple hours. Yeah, a couple hours. Twelve fifteen. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. All right. All right. Are you better now? I feel a little better. Thank you for sending some energy. That last entity uh, drained me out for some reason. When he left, everything went, and I was like, boy, that never happened before. I wonder what that was about. So, But I just accept it for what it is. So let's move forward. So, Any questions before we move forward? Just push the energy to you and bring something that you're familiar to right okay. now to build your strength. Very good. Greetings. I am Shell oh, from the Chikani race. Welcome. How are you today? Wonderful, thank you. How are you? I am very good. I just wanted to come and say a couple things about unconditional love. Thank you. Because whether you like it or not, you have it. Whether you choose to use it or not, that is another question. Because you were born of spirit. The spirit is born of unconditional love. Do you understand that? You are a god within yourself of unconditional love, correct? So therefore, you have it. And you can use it. Now, there is many things around you that, that cause you to be confused or feel pain or whatever. And sometimes unconditional love is not shown, but it is within you still and you can call upon it and bring it forth. Unconditional love is, is unconditional. It does not force itself on other people. It does not ask other people to change for them. It actually evolves yourself in if you have unconditional love for yourself you can much more share it with others. Does that make sense to you? If you can love yourself unconditionally, you can love others unconditionally. Because of that is who you are. You are the spirit of unconditional love. You bring that forth with you wherever you go. Whether you want to show anyone that or not, that is another thing. You are connected to everyone with love. You cannot help that. You are a community. It is getting stronger. You may not feel like a community, but it is a community because you all share that strand, that, that love, that spirit that you were born into, and that connects you all.
that connects you all together. No matter if you like it or not, you're connected to every single person on this planet and every being in the universe that, that has that same spirit. Do you understand? So you may be connected to people you don't like, but guess what? Guess what? That is just who you are. And you if you love yourself, and, and that is just the way it is. Now, bring that out and be an example. You can be an example of unconditional love and let others see it. And let others see it, you understand. They, they can actually visualize through your actions, movements, and personality if you are experiencing your own unconditional love because you will not you won't be able to help loving everybody. You won't be able to help connecting in a way that you want to be connected to other people. Do you understand? Does that make sense to you? Yes. What we don't understand, or what you don't understand, is that unconditional love is a connector to everyone. Everyone. Is there any questions for me? Yeah, Gabriel had a question. Yes, Gabriel. Yes, I, I just wanted to say hello to you and much hello. love to you. And I very find you very fascinated. Oh, <laughs> you're... I'm wondering if you have any tips for me. I'm interested in going swimming with the dolphins. Yes. Do you have any tips how I can manifest that? Connect with them because they are a species that is lovely to connect with. They are warm, friendly. You won't be able to understand what they're saying, I'm sorry, but you will be able to understand what they're feeling. And when you swim with the dolphins, intend that you know them. And because they will know you, that any time a dolphin will swim with you, they intend to know you. They intend to know you. They intend to know everyone around, actually. That is one beautiful thing about the dolphin species is that they are connected to their world. They are connected to their world. And they understand it. Yes. I'm from Sweden here, and I, I would like to teach you more about Sweden if you accept. Ah, that. Sweden. Scandinavia. Yes. You could teach me more about Scandinavia. I would love to hear more about it. Yes. Because... As, as per now, I do not know uh, the whole world, but I've seen many parts of it. And I, I understand that it is a beautiful place, yes. I invite to connect telepathically to you while I'm dreaming or anything. That day will come. That day will come. Okay. So... And, and before I say anything more, I am already telepathically connected to you. But you have got to engage the telepath in you for us to be able to speak. You're all telepathic, all of you. It is in your nature to be telepathic. You have just not reached the understanding of what it is. Because if you knew what it is, then you would be it. Because it is within you. I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly. But if you understood telepathy the way it should be in, in the form of love and connection, then you would be telepathic right now. In fact, some of you are. And you can be more telepathic. But you have to understand that you can be there. Your mind system blocks you from being your that person which is advanced because you're told you're not advanced right now you're told you're not of the future but you are of the future you see the future is of now and now is of the future so if you really wanted to be telepathic you would be telepathic yes and i'm be excited about Bashos told me a long time ago through his channeling that we can visit your planet and walk around your planet. Can you tell me how that works? If you, like I said about the telepathy, 
if you believe that you can be it, you can be it. You can be other places as well if you believe that you are there. Now, not saying that you're going to be traveling a lot in your mind right now. However, our species can move forward and backward, and we can know places before we are there to that place. And we can walk around on that place before we are there, but we do not have the knowledge of it until we are there. But we know, but we can call on that when we are there. Do you understand? Yes, I, I kind of felt that you were coming today, so I thought, thought that you told me that. Well, as Roxanne would say, booyah. So, anyway, let's go to Haiyan. Hayan? Hello? I think he's AFK for a second. He asked me to go first. Ah. Um, hi, Shell. It's Rowie. It's a pleasure to meet you. Rowie, how are you? Perfect. And you? Good. I'm good. Thank great. You. I'm great. I, <laughs> I have a question about the sixth hybrid race. Yes. And I also have a question about everything being here and now. Um... So Bashar has been talking about the six hybrid race recently and okay. also the concept of everything is here and now. Yes. Is this meaning that the six hybrid race has already been created and it's already there? We just have oh. to shift towards those realities or we incarnate in another time? How does it this work? As the six the, yes, it's, it is already here and it will be in this now very, this now very shortly. And it is in this now with the knowledge of it. Do you understand that? The very fact that you are knowledgeable of it makes it now. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So, and then, uh, what was your other question? Incarnation. Incarnation. Yes, I mean, is, is, is that just a process of incarnation? So we're incarnating in this here and now to experience these it's, changes on Earth. It's just part of the cycle that you create for yourself because you create your own nows, you create your own future, you create your own next life, if you want to call it that. It is a continuation uh -huh. of this life. It is a continuation of the last life. You bring all your lives through in through your chakras, and now is the creation of the next thing. And so as you are creating the next thing, you are cre you are learning the past. Do you understand? You are learning and you are learning the future as well. And all things come together in the now. But when they come together in the now, you cannot always understand them in your form as you are now. And many alien species and forms cannot understand the now as a perfect cycle or string or whatever you want to call it. It is a continuation of the things that must be you that are eternal. Thank you, Shell. That's perfect. Hello, Shell. This is Hayan. Hayan! Continue. Yes. Uh, so nice to talk to you. It is so nice to talk to you, too. Humans are fascinating. Awesome. Uh, I would like to first say that um, Sweden has most trees in the world. So it's ah, like, it's like 75, 75 to 80 percent 80 covered in, in forest. And, and uh, from Bashar we have learned that uh, they, they, the trees are, uh, what's it called, transmitters. Yes. Yes. So would that be would that mean that Sweden or this area is like a hot spot for energies or transmissions or transmitter meaning that it's giving out sending out information to the world. Yes. Trees are sending out all kinds of information, actually. Their health, their well-being, they're sending out um, oxygen into your air. They're, they're transmitting different things. If you would go hug a tree, you would feel a, a pulse. How? 
because they are alive too, but their heartbeat is very slow. But they still have what would feel like a heartbeat because their pulse of energy, it's an energy pulse that goes through their entire being, if you will. And yes, they are transmitters. And did you notice that some of these species of trees are dying? Do you know why? Because they do not have the ability to adapt and poison in the ground. Mm. And the, in many ways, they are connected under the earth. Trees all around the world are connected in, in, a, in a single growth, in a single thought, in a single now. Do you understand that? Yes, and so okay. Sweden is, yes, very special because of so much transmission, helping the earth as, as it is in many ways to connect to the next now, to connect to the universe, to connect to the others around the world that is connected to it. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes. Good. Yes. Go on. I, I see that you are, there's a question in your head. Yeah, because you, you actually brought me to my next question. Yes. About the um, sixth hybrid race. Yes. And uh, we, are, uh, we are doing this because of the pollution. Yes. So that is why we are going to, to hybridize. And is the pollution be already been done? Or is it something that is going to come in a different future now? This is a good question. It is already done in many ways. That is why we tell you that your race will continue. This timeline will continue because of the sixth hybrid race and because it is already finished in my, our minds, in your minds, in everybody's minds, in the now. So it is done. And that is why your race will continue. Because without it, you would not continue. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And is it due it to the pollution? Be done for your strength, for your adaptability, and for your understanding of the now. To move forward is to get stronger and to bring your spirit forth. Yes. Okay. Um... Uh, we have l learned from Bashar about uh, shifting from parallel reality to parallel reality. Yes. And that everything is here and now. He is wise and old, and he knows many things, even more than I, but I will know soon. All right. Because but, it is with uh, me in my now. It is his now. His, his now is huge. Oh, wonderful. So we thought, or I thought that all of the aliens we would encounter would also use that and have that perspective. But many of them still use as a linear timeline, even though yes. they are fourth dimensional. Yes, it, it is as it is. When understanding comes, things change. And when that understanding comes, their now will change to the now that will be. So. In all understandings, you must live in the understanding that you have before you. It is unreal to suggest that you change your dimension, your understandings, without being taught or without experience. So your now now may not make any sense when I say the future now, the past now, all that things. It may not make sense, or it may, but you do not experience it because you're experiencing it and not knowing it. Yes, all right, all right. Well, thank you. I will uh, pass the mic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anissa goes, Anissa is our new member, and she goes next. Hello. Hello. Okay. Yes. Greetings from Spain. <laughs> Greetings. I would like. How are you? Nice. Um, it's fine. just a qu just a question about my father because yeah. he was a strange person. Um, 
and he used to see some, uh, he said some very strange planes round with a light and some beings coming out from uh, from the plane and uh, and much more things. So I wish to know if he's possible because he was a mystery for me. If yeah. he First had some contact or if he's just hallucination. First of all, he was not strange. He was an un he was identified in the now as peculiar to you, but he was not a strange man. He understood the things that he understood, and his experience in the now changed your perception of him because it changed his perception of himself. He became different to you, but the same to many others. So it was, he is not strange. He is experienced a different now that has changed your perception of him. So yes, and he was in contact with other beings. And when you become in contact with other beings, such as you are in contact with me, or you are in contact with, say, Lakesh, or someone like Tukur, it changes who you are in some way. Because that now is being experienced in a different way than you would have originally experienced a now without them. Does that make yes. sense? So the way he experienced these be beings changed his now. But he was abducted? I didn't say that. I said okay. the way he experienced these beings changed his now. I do not know what his experience was, but I can tell you that it, it was something that changed his now. Okay. And uh, why did I, I personally, now question about me, why did I feel as a child that I didn't belong to Earth, Earth and um, I always felt I was from somewhere there, somewhere else? Well, that is your, that is your spirit speaking to you because mm. you are not from one place. You are not, except from spirit, of course. But I mean, as far as a location now, as you move through the universe, in your different nows, you will feel some of the past. You belonged, you felt maybe that you belonged to a great place and you were longing for it now in the past nows, but you've brought that to your present now. And... This affects how you live your nows, but bring your spirit out and you will understand. I know you, I say bring your spirit out and it makes it sound so simple, but it's not that simple. But if you would understand who you are in the now, then you would understand that yesterday, that yester now. Does that make sense to you? Well, but you are special because you you are aware of things outside your present now. I am not sure I'm wow. saying things right because people were going, oh. <sighs> um, does that make sense to you? Um, it doesn't answer my question. <laughs> Well, well uh, my question, the question I asked. I under misunderstood then. Mm. You, you feel, I understand, I you do not feel like part of this race or this earth. Yes. Is that true? Yes. This earth here. At the moment I am, but where I come from, it was not here. That's, that's my feeling when I was a child. That is correct. That and is what I'm telling it? you. That is a that's a correct assumption. You are not from anywhere but the oversoul and and the souls of the universe. Um, that is your the only place that you're originally from. These past lives, these past nows and future nows, they're not where you're from. You mm. understand. But you yes. feel them, you feel connected to them, do you understand? 
as yes. you feel connected to all of the nows, but these are stronger. These are ones that are particularly resonate with you. Does that answer it more clearly? Yes. Okay. So uh, I had also a feeling all my life that I came here with a purpose, a mission, and this would be not just self-development, but something has to do with the help uh, help others or yes. the humanity or the planet. Am I doing it or um, will I do it? That is you, your question to answer for you. I cannot tell you if you're doing it or not because you are in your now. I can tell you that you're not sure that you're doing it because of the question you asked, but you must know within yourself what you are doing. I can, with my unconditional love, I can say to you yes or no or whatever, but that is not what I am to say because I am to let you develop the person that you are, the skills that you have, the things that resonate with you are your nows and I should not say anything that will affect that because that is not my purpose. Your purpose, you say, is to help others. Yes, find that way that you can help others. But I am not pushing my spirit onto yours or yours onto mine. Do you understand? But yes, if you feel, if you understand this now as a now to help with others, then that and that resonates within you, and that is your now, and it is your most highest excitement, then yes, move forward in that way. I see a question in you that says, but I don't know what that is. Is that true? Yes, and how to do it? That is something you must meditate upon. Because you may be helping people in the now, and not even know it. Are you helping people in the now? <sighs> that may be an unfair question at the moment. So I will say this to you. You have talents. You know what they are. Develop them. If that is your perfect resonation, you do what you must do to help others because that is your perfect resonation, is to help and you must find a way to do it in your now, in your universe, in your ways of thoughts and patterns, in your spirit. I will let you know that that is you. And you must find you in that perfect resonation. Sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook, but it is not. Something to do with energies? Your energy is your energy. I don't know how to speak about your energy in the sense that you want me to because you are creating your own universe and you put that energy in it that already exists. Put as much energy that already exists into this project as you wish. But you have the energy already. You don't need any more energy from outside. The energy that you have is perfect enough for whatever it is that's perfect for you to do. You already have that. It's already established that this now has everything that you need to succeed. Thank you. Do we have others? Uh -huh. Um, hello. I think Pegasus had a question. Yes, I had uh, two questions. Um, hi. Uh, hello. Well, what did you say your name was? Shell. Shell. Hi, Shell. Hi. Um, you know many other aliens, right? Um, I know I of many other aliens, and I do know some other aliens, yes. Um, I want to know if... Uh, if you know of any uh, race of aliens that look well like this or similar to this, I have to uh, screen share it. They're called the Zangheili. They're from a 
Halo video game, um, I find them very fascinating. And I found out that there's this one race that looks similar to them in terms of the mouth called the Anub. But I, I was wondering if you knew of any that looks similar to this Zankili race. I don't make it a... I do make it a habit of looking for other races. However, I have seen them before. Yes, they're similar. There's a, there are some differences. The color is way too dark. There are lighter colored species. There are brighter green, but they do have many similarities to that. I could go on and on and point out the small details, but that's not necessary. Yes, I've seen them. Uh, do you know what they're called? You call them the Anu? Uh, the Anub. A N U B E E. That's oh. uh, that's as close as I could uh, spell it. The, I have a different name for them, but that is all right. Call them the Anub if you will. It does not matter. They're not in your um, galaxy right now. Continue. What is the other question? Yes, uh, my second question. Um, it was about a dream that I had a few days yes. ago. Um, in this dream, I saw a small child. I guess it was about in its toddler stage. It was a looks like a yellow feline Lyran, and she had a. Uh, black spots and I wasn't sure if this child was my hybrid Blearin child. Yes, I knew that you were going to ask that. And yes, she is. <laughs> yes, she's beautiful, isn't she? Yes. Yes, quite beautiful actually. And quite bright, brilliant, shall we say. So, yes. What is your other question? You have another question even. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sexuality. I tend to talk about it a lot. Yes. And I you desire. Would like to mate with the Lyran. Well. Yeah, there's that. Um, but uh, I think, and what I'm asking myself is, why am I sexually attracted to aliens? Well. Only, actually, you can answer that, but I can give it a go if you would like. Um, I believe you're attracted to aliens because they represent something that you want to be, something that you would like to aspire to, which in your now you can. You can aspire to be more like them. However, I think they're, the looks of aliens also is fascinating to you. And therefore, you are attracted to those things outside your world for the reason of um, evolution and for the reason of curiosity. You would wonder if it, mating with an alien would actually feel the same as mating with a human. So there are many things within you that I see that you are bringing out from your spirit that are causing this now to be uh, look to the future of perhaps your entire hybridization self program. Uh, yes, because I, I do find myself to be fascinated with things that look different. Yes. Um, whenever I see an extraterrestrial or an extraterrestrial picture that is not human, I tend to. Uh, see the soul behind the body and say, yes. oh, that's a nice form you have there, dear soul. Yes, the soul comes into different beings looking slightly different, but being the same. It is the same, but it has to fit in the, the, the space of the soul, if you will. Yes, your soul is very interesting. Thank you. Your soul is very interesting as well. Plus the fact that you have hybridization within you and interesting things. You're actually, you tend to have a Lyran curiosity, which is very interesting to me. A human Lyran concept, so to speak, which is very interesting. So therefore, you are very diverse individual.
Yes, um, I have one more question about the hybridization. Is it something that all that uh, that's only for our physical body, or do we take it with us throughout our lives? You take it with you to the next life because everything that is in this now, the next now, the last now, comes into the chakras after you return to energy and then cycle through your next personality or where wherever you're going. Everything comes with you, especially the most important things. You don't take every little moment with you, but you take many of the most important of moments with you. The most important moments come with you to share with this now, to develop this now, to be called on to help with this now, this lesson, whatever you want to call it. And it is moving forward to the future as well, because this now and the next now are united. Thank you. Um, I do not know if I speak clearly enough sometimes. You do, you do. You're perfect. Um, and your speech is very clear and nice. Um, there is uh, people from outside of this audience asking questions through the questions application. And one of them is from Marco da Costa. Marco da Costa. And he asks uh, how to learn channeling. Learning channeling is actually now. <laughs> I say now a lot, don't I? But it is with you already. How to learn it is to bring it out of you. And that is an intentioned meditation. It is just be being. Like Roxanne said earlier, we're not human doings. We're human beings, or you are human beings. I, you are human beings, not human doings. I, that's what he said. She said, he said, but I, I am confused right at the moment. Hold on, one moment. Yes. So therefore, channeling should not be a problem for anyone, really, because you are all capable of it. Did you want to say something, Roxanne? Oh, no, no, no. It's uh, he, she, it, shim, whatever you choose. I love them both. So, oh. booyah. <laughs> I love you. I love you anyway. But anyway, <laughs> no matter what you are, I love you. You are a hybrid species to me. Awesome. So I, and it's a lovely thing. I love it. I love it. So, where was I? Ah, channeling. channeling. So bring that into your now. Intended to be part of your now. It is not beyond you. It is not something that is foreign to you. It is actually part of who you are, if you understand who you fully are. So therefore, just let it happen. If you hear something in your head, let it out. This is the beginning of channeling, is to let out those things in your head that do not seem like you, but maybe seem like you, and let it come out. And you know what? The truth in it will capture you. And then you will know that you are channeling. I don't know how else to put it with humans. Thank you. Um, next question is from Sahaj Dak. Uh, you know him, or at least uh, he was around for a while. Yes. He asks, I had a dream not too long ago that a Pleiadian woman took me to her planet. Was she my spirit guide? Usually your spirit guides don't take you to other planets. However, it's a, it is possible. I believe this was an astral projection that you went to their planet with someone else. So that is just my idea. That's the what I can understand from what you're saying. I do not believe it was a, a spirit guide, but I do believe it was from outside your understanding of yourself. Which you can understand, by the way. I'm just telling you I don't think you understand it right now. Yeah, next one is... Thank you. Next one is Jay. Jay! Hi, how are you doing? Hello. Uh, I have a general question about uh, channeling. Yes. What, what would it be like to have sex while channeling? 
it would be difficult but possible you would be distracted by one or the other unless you knew how to bring that all into one you would have to be single-minded about channeling and sexuality both at the same time do you understand what I'm saying many cannot do that in your realm because it is distracting one is distracted by the other however it can be done if you bring them into perfect alignment mm -hmm. does that make sense to you yes um, I just asked that because when um, I had a moment of channeling I, I felt like I had an opportunity to have sex and I yes. was like kind of just like would that be like I don't know you know if you if you believe and bring those into unity they will be as one and they will it will be as if you are I do not how know how to describe that feeling however it would be an unusual feeling but it would be great I'm sure yes we know how to do it but our sexuality is different than yours okay yeah that's that's all I have to say ah very good thank you thank you <laughs> So our question line is is now finished. Thank you very ah, much for your visit. But good. you can speak, continue to speak. Oh, do, can you give us uh, Shakani poetry? You called me dude, no, but it's, oh, I thought you said dude. I I like that word actually. So, but a Shakani poem. Yes. Oh, uh, what about what? Love. Love. Okay. Not necessarily not necessarily sexual. Any type of love will do. Ah, the emotion love and the sexual love are all connected. So it does not matter what kind of poem about love it is. So, all right. Thank you. Uh, poetry doesn't play a huge part in our society anymore because it is, we develop the future poetry from the now. And the past poetry is a teacher. So that is what, I, I'm not sure if I'm making any sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. yes, so we are saying this about, I will give you a short poetry about Thank that. You. Yeah. Let me try to put it in your language in a way that is actually uh, poetic. Because it wouldn't sound poetic if I just spoke it out. Can, can you read it in your language if you don't mind? Uh, I would prefer not to. All right. But... I just do I would like to just speak it out the way it is and see if it sounds even a bit po poetic to you because okay. Okay. okay okay returned to thought in the sense that you and I connect in a way that is not connectable in other ways my eyes and your eyes fall on each other but they do not fall separately. They are connected through connection of time, which does not exist. And everything that is now returns to now tomorrow. And I am feeling a feeling of yesterday, and I am wondering about the feeling tomorrow, but it is all now. Let us become what we are today for a mild and long not a mild a meek and long period sending out thoughts to those around that let you know that we connect in a way that is not the same but yet the same I am of heart and my heart reaches out and the reaching out of heart from both sides is a stronger connection connection and that is important and that is reliable and that is now amazing it actually resonates very much with what you said today and it is true poetry yes wonderful thank you I just wonder if you have anything on unconditional love which comes to mind. 
Oh, you're not tired of me talking about unconditional love yet. I, I mean, see. I mean, it, it would really crown what we already discussed. All right. For a recap, as we would say, yes. unconditional love is within you all, within me, within every species. The very essence of who we are is unconditional love. The very light and spirit that we were born into or hatched into or whatever into is of unconditional love. Bring it forth in your life, in your capacity, which is great, by the way, and you will know how to love others unconditionally. Now, that flame of unconditional love reaches around the universe. Don't let anyone tell you that you don't have it. Don't let anyone force their unconditional love on you because that's not unconditional love. Unconditional love is acceptance. 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 What more can I say? And not in a negative way at all, ever. Do you Thank all understand you. that? Thank you so much. I think I saw an image of you. You're supposed to bring by like a very quick second. Very good. It is possible because everything is possible. That is something that humanity has got to grasp and will. It was very interesting. I thought I saw how you look like to some degree very quickly. So that's well, exciting. you're not frightened away, so I'm very happy about that. So I will leave you now. Much blessings to you and much discovery of who you are as individuals in the now and in the fire of unconditional love. Learn who you are in that because that will project through all the nows. Thank you very much. Many it thanks. It's so much fun to have you around and please come more often. Thank you. I enjoyed spending time in linear space with you. And we enjoyed a jolt of higher dimensional frequency when you visit. Thank you. I think, yes. Have a wonderful now. You as well. Shivai. 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 Hakatu. Hakatu. <coughs> Roxy, we're about to finish, but you have a microphone. You can speak as long as you wish. Reflect on anything you like. Oh. No, I'm good, baby. That was absolutely wonderful stuff. Thank you so much for All that. Right. Then I would invite some poetry and some blessings as a finishing um, kind of sequence of events. Oh, thanks for being here, Roxy. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Really, you guys are, are great. Um, that was Shell. I love him. He leaves me feeling good, by the way. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I will start and invite, I guess, Rox and others to follow. What do you have in mind? Um, it's actually a nice time. Nice things are happening. Um, people close to me say that they are depressed, and it's really hard to go through life being depressed. And I'm depressed. The waves of depression just come, and darkness kind of gets inside me. And it's up to us what to do with it. It's fall, it's seasonal affective disorder. Light is a treatment for it. Uh, Google it, seasonal affective disorder. But I guess, except I guess Australia, in Australia it would be the other way around. But darkness is here, Halloween is coming, which is kind of a celebration, welcome in darkness. And December, December is darkest month, and we have, what the that, is, right? Um, I guess I guess it's part of natural cycle, so take it as natural cycle. Take it as natural cycle. Take it as something natural. Accept it, and then choose what to do with it. And shine in the darkness. Shine. Hi uh, 
take your matches and make light and make a fire and shine as bright as you can and take a deep breath and be in balance. Shine and balance. Run and balance. Jump and be in balance. One jump and jump and be in balance while in a flight. That's my blessing to you today. Beautiful. Booyah. Booyah. Thank you, Max. Yeah, I'll give you something. If you go back and reflect upon this time that you guys have co-created once again, what is the overall theme of this idea through all the entities that are partaking as well as your questions and such? It would be that of unconditional love. And as Shell said, the great entity of all the nows who is, let's say, feeling honored to co-create among us. Booyah. He said this, acceptance, acceptance, acceptance. Remember, entities of ascension, if you are love, think about it. Love is only one thing, that of unconditional. And the moment you condition it to a perceiving mind of the illusion, that what you attached to for some reason or another, by no fault of your own, it was your choice in that idea to let go of that for the civilization of humanity to ascend. When you condition that other, once again, conditioning is not unconditional. Hmm. So in that idea, hold steadfast to that of love, radiate that love, be that love, encompass that love, and walk with the divine nonchalance that you are, with no question or doubt in your own soul, your own self, as God. For let me understand this for you. And I will give you this telepathically as well as energetically through tone. When your creator looks upon you in action, I dare say not one of you has ever been face to face with the creator in conflict. In other words, he has granted you, gifted you with that unconditional. The creator has not come down and said, wait a minute. Oh, I don't believe you should be doing that. Hmm? So it would be an understanding to extend that once again beautiful idea that the Creator has given you. Full, untethered, unconditional moments of now to express and remember and understand your journey home. So if you can extend that, let's say, beautiful gift that the Creator has given to you upon the others in your vibrational reality of sense of unconditional let's say co-creation to experience each other through the remembrance journey coming home extend that courtesy to your brethren who have chosen to be with you and are honored to be with you in this wonderful epic civilization that of humanity this is my greatest joy my greatest wish I bid you a good moment Odone. There you go. <laughs> Good. Booyah. 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 Beautiful. You're muted, Max. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's muted. I'm not hearing him. Yeah, Max, you're muted. He's still <laughs> muted. Yeah, it, it feels like you, Roxy, you expanded since I first met you that. Now you, you can just tune in to what you want. If you want the channel, you, just tune in, you don't create the waiting and process of starting channel, you just do it. It's amazing to see that. Yeah, it's definitely shifting. It's just like I'm like right there, higher self, shifting in and out. And whoever, yeah, it's re yeah, very good. Yeah, you, yeah. you understand how easy it is, and then you share how easy it is to us. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I would like anyone with uh, alien language blessing. Yes, Naga is dancing. Good.
Namaste. I and we send the love to you unconditional. It is to us graceful and pours out like water. We, I, are the ones that invite you to join us in conditional unconditional love. And therefore, we will be waiting and we feel it already, but direct it toward us in a way that is most potent. I and we are connections with you and they. Thank you, everybody. And uh, till next time, uh, it was wonderful um, co creation. Yes. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Everyone. Love you Thanks all. See you all. Thank you. Lovely. Love everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye all. Bye. 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 Love to all. Namaste. Namaste. I feel okay.